in this case. Let's take a listen to some of the testimony of the trial of Karen Reed. This is uh, Nagel on cross-examination. Uh, talking about that blob and talking about the reaction in the vehicle and really trying to be grilled and kind of a gotcha moment from the defense of Karen Reed. Let's look. That this black object that you talk about was ever five or six feet long prior to telling the jury that today. Objection. You have to ask that differently, Mr. Today, this afternoon, is the first time that you've provided testimony or information to the official regarding this case, that the object was five or six feet long? No. I'm sorry? No. Who did you tell prior to today? About what? Okay, I thought we were talking about the fact that you now testified that this black object was five or six feet long. Do you recall that? Today, yes. And my question to you was, you've never mentioned that this black object was five or six feet long until the last hour or so when Mr. Lally questioned you about it, correct? Yes. Now, when you were passing the property, you did not think it was a body? At the time, no. Um, you claim that you told everyone in the car that you saw something, correct? Correct. And your friend Sarah said what? Or something to that effect, correct? Correct. And there was no further conversation after that, correct? Not that I can remember. No. Uh, and you didn't think that it was a person who was in trouble, correct? Jackson. Did you think that? At what time, Mr. Um, when, there, when you're leaving the property, after leaving the house at 1.45 a.m. and getting into the McKay vehicle and passing that lawn, the Albert lawn, you did not think that you saw a person who was in trouble, correct? No. Or a person that may have needed help, correct? I don't know, no. And you were right there, correct, passing the property? I was passing the property, yes. Not as close to the property as your friend Sarah Levinson, but you were in the back seat on the driver's side, correct? Correct. And you were in a car such that if you thought that you saw something that could have been a person, all you had to do was tell the driver, correct? Objection. Sustained. Did you tell the driver that you saw somebody who was in trouble? Well, I said it out loud in the car. So is it your testimony now that you said out loud in the car, there's a person who's in trouble? That's not what I said, no. No, during a blizzard who might need some help, correct? I did not, know. I, I don't even get quite where they were going. They established she didn't know what it was. And then they're trying to make it look like she's lying about what it was. Uh, and I think anybody with a reasonable, you know, life experience could go, oh, I get it. You don't know what that is at the side of the road. She didn't realize it at the time. End of story. Um, th th this defense, I don't feel like is playing very well to the jury at all. It feels very gotcha. Uh, but what do you think of the testimony and what do you think of how they're they're handling these witnesses? Well, I, I do think this, and that is this defense team is very well prepared. They've poured over everything that is available. They've gone on to social media. Uh, they've been fed a lot by different social media personalities. And so they are very on top of the facts of the case. And a lot of times you will not see a defense team as well prepared as they are. So I give them certainly an A for their preparedness. I uh, I think that their style and every person is going to have a different reflection, but it is like nails on a chalkboard to me when Jackson speaks. It's so used car salesman, condescending. He has said some of the most condescending things. I'll give you an example. Uh, when he asked the officer if he went back to the office to get stakes to put up the crime scene, scene uh, tape, and then the officer kind of looked at him and and said, we don't have any stakes. And then uh, Jackson says, well, you know what I'm talking about, right? Stakes, that's spelled S-T-A-K-E-S, -E not S-T-E-A-K. I mean, it was so condescending. And I think for the most part, I'd like to think that the public wouldn't treat an officer in a professional environment like that. Mm -hmm. No one should treat anybody like that. Um, but he, but that's just one example. There's many, many, yeah. many who's constantly being condescending. I don't know how that's going to be received by a jury. I can't I I imagine well.
Now, I mean, in this this kind of smaller town, you know, I know it's near Boston and all that, but I mean, this is a, a community. This is a, a tight knit little community here where everybody pretty much knows each other. And obviously they've gotten used to bad behavior uh, and condescending behavior, but it's uh, it, it just, it doesn't feel like it's coming across very well uh, at this point. Uh, very real toll in this is the, the emotional toll that has unfortunately been suffered by the family, the friends of John O'Keefe, or anyone who doesn't uh, subscribe to the cult of free Karen Reed. Now, that's not to say you, you can think she's innocent. That's fine. I'm talking about the cult of free Karen Reed, uh, led by that idiot blogger that uh, has his own mess of legal issues and mental health problems, uh, and, and the harassment that, that have, uh, has been encouraged uh, to go out and go after this family. Let's listen to Allie McCabe talking about what she has gone through uh, and several others uh, over the last handful of years. And what, if anything else, uh, has are you, your close friends with Colin Albert, is that correct? Correct. What, if anything else, has uh, you, either your family or Colin Albert and his family undergone uh, over the course of dependency of this case? Objection. No, the, the door's been opened. I'm allowing it. Um, well, basically harassment. Harassment by who? Um, bloggers, people online. And uh, what, if anything, in relation to Colin Albert uh, being in the house has, has occurred as far as the harassment that you're talking about? Um, can you rephrase? Um, with reference to what you were talking about as far as the relevancy of Colin Albert being in the house at that time, um, what, if any, Harassment was there in relation to that and in relation to Colin? Well, no, go ahead. She can answer. Colin wasn't at the house, so he's being harassed for. He was not at the house when John was there, so I drove him home. So he's, the people are harassing him, saying he was at the house when it's not true. When you speak about harassment, what, what specifically type of harassment are we talking um, Phone call, constant phone calls, emails, awful messages. Objection. I'll allow it. Focus on this witness, not Colin Albert at this point. As far as uh, you and, and your family, what, if any, type of harassment have you received? Um, people showing up at our house, um, people emailing my school. Uh, um, <laughs> uh, just like a lot of <laughs> harassment. <laughs> Can I have a moment, please? Sure. I'm sorry. I have something. Thank you. And uh, how long a period of time has that persisted for? A very long time. Thank you. I have no further. I have no further. Okay. Doesn't get a whole lot more authentic than that. Uh, that's that's the toll that will haunt these these people for the rest of their lives. The these people who were high school kids at the time. And somehow, these idiots uh, are, are out there trying to to say that they were involved with killing an officer that they had no reason to want to kill. Uh, what, what's your reaction to, to all of this? I mean, I've never seen anything like this, uh, especially in a case that doesn't involve a celebrity. Yeah, you know, there's zero proof, zero proof that anyone other than Karen Reed hit John O'Keefe. There's no proof that uh, Colin Albert or police officer Brian Albert or Brian Higgins, an ATF agent, killed him. They, they haven't been released from their jobs. There's no investigation because there's no proof. There's no DNA. There's no blood. There's no drag marks. There's no, their house wasn't out of order. It's, it's, it's so ridiculous. And when I watched Ali's testimony, I mean, I have to tell you, I was a little choked up. And then I posted about it on my Twitter feed, mm -hmm. Tony. Yeah. And Dozens of people called her a liar, a faker, uh, that she's pathetic, that she's just a lying McAlbert, they call him. They combine the names. I, I have never blocked more people in one day than yesterday uh, because it's um, or the day I posted that yeah. because I'm just not going to put up with the I don't want her 
to be able to see that anywhere yeah. in my feed. Yeah. I don't want to be any part of a platform that would support witness intimidation, harass. She's 20 years old. Yeah. <laughs> She's a kid. Yeah. It's ugly. It, it's it's insane. Uh it, and it's it, it's not it's not arguing a case. It, it's 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 just harassing people because I guess these people want to be part of a club and that club is involved with just harassing human beings and trying to make their lives utter hell. And for what? These people have nothing to do with the case. Like I said, it's a cult. It, it is It is every making of a cult. And it, it's really just sad to see uh, people go down that road and think that they're doing some sort of virtuous act by, by making these arguments. Uh, Colin well, Albert, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I, I think I might have shared with you when I was there that I met one of the cult members because I happened to be at a restaurant and he, I, you know, saw me ordering a sweatshirt and drinking mm -hmm. a, a lime spritzer, uh, you know, lime juice with water. Yeah. And he started apparently taking photos of me because all of a sudden I saw him show up online. Uh, but anyway, he shared with me that he has spent $22,000 of his own money supporting Reed, that his wife doesn't even support this this effort, and that he's spending months at a time down here just to support the effort. He doesn't even live in the area. He's traveled clear across the country um, repeatedly to support her. And I, I said, why? Yeah. And then he said, well, I, I you know. I just am a believer in what the blogger says and, and that she's innocent. It's hard to fathom, Tony, but <laughs> this is a phenomena. I'm going to guess that marriage is not is going to end uh, shortly because of this. <laughs> uh, and his business or his business or, is going to go under. Yeah, I, it's it's sick. I don't. Yeah. I mean, seek help to that individual is what I would say. You have a mental health problem going on. Hey, thanks for checking out the video. Be sure to follow us wherever you download podcasts, and especially Apple Podcasts, where you can get advanced episode and premium content on our premium channel right there. Also, be sure to follow us on social media so you don't miss any breaking updates on the stories that matter to you most. We're on TikTok, X, Instagram, Facebook. Just search Hidden Killers Podcast with Tony Bruschi, and you'll find us right there. Again, thanks for watching.